for those of you that um, are saying I should wash it first, eh, a little dirt never hurt anybody. Natural immunity. Mm. So good. Okay, so I waited till today to shoot my garden first garden tour video because it was cloudy yesterday and I didn't want to film it in the cloudiness. It was supposed to be sunny all day, but it hasn't come out yet. I'm going to start with some of the other areas and I'm going to save the best for last because yesterday I pruned and tied up all my tomatoes so my garden over there looks beautiful and I can't wait to show you but I'm going to make you wait till the end so well I'm going to show you the less perfect areas of the garden first perfection isn't everything I mean obviously this video isn't going to be perfect done is better than perfect but the part that I'm most happy and most proud of right now is that garden We'll show you that at the end. So for now, we're gonna show you the places that are still in development. So this right here is where we're gonna put all of our raspberries. They're gonna go all along this whole section. So as you can see, we've got one here now. This is a black raspberry. This is a red one, but I can't remember what the variety is. I will look that up and put it on the screen right below. These came from MI Gardener. So this one is a black raspberry. I said is red. I did get a yellow jewel and one other red one. I can't remember what the variety is, but both of those died from my, my gardener. That's these two. The yellow one was the one I was really looking forward to because I love yellow raspberries. They're so good. But we'll get more and we'll replace them and then they'll be all along here. And once we get them all in, we'll cover Mother Nature with some wood chips because you know she doesn't like to be naked. Okay. So these are all my potatoes. This one had the little berries on it um, and some bird or something came and ate the berries. But I need your help because once it has these berries, does that mean that they're ready? I mean, I know they need to start falling over and everything, but are they ready? I don't know. I don't want to pull them up and have it be a waste. Like this one is totally falling over. And yes, I need to wait, sorry. Ignore my weeds. Done is better than perfect. On this side of the downspout will be, words hard, will be raspberries. And on this side will be rhubarb. So, one more little rhubarb plant right now, but you know, rhubarb really spreads. So, and this is our strawberry. So you can see that we have quite a few strawberries that are ready and then some that get eaten by critters. But look it, we planted a ton of them, so I'm okay with sharing. And if the bugs don't wanna eat my strawberries or the bunnies don't wanna eat my strawberries, why would I wanna eat them? Sorry about the air conditioner. This one, I think I'm gonna eat this one. I'm gonna tell ya. Hmm. Hmm. so much flavor in such a tiny in such a tiny little package they haven't really been growing big strawberries since we put them over here um because they haven't really established themselves yet but they're growing these tiny oh that one got eaten for those of you that um are saying i should wash it first eh, a little dirt never hurt anybody Natural immunity. Mm. So good. These put off plenty of runners. So these will root 
all over the place. Hayden needs to get in here and do some weeding so that the grass is not stealing nutrients from our berries. Right there is originally where we planted the raspberry bush, but this fall I am going to dig that up, split it up, and then we will spread it out beneath the window. Along there, along the window. That is that side of the food production. These are strawberries I planted from seed. I think this is a weed, but I'm not gonna pull it yet because there was a bunch of different strawberries and I'm not sure if it's strawberry or not. This was a runner that I just kind of stuck in here. This is a kiwi, and I'm not sure where I'm gonna put that yet. This is sage that I didn't get in the ground last year, and now I just need to get it in the ground. These are three purple mums that I haven't decided where I'm gonna put them yet. That's a weed. We don't want that in there. How did I miss that one? Okay, this is sage. Oh look, there's more weeds. I'm gonna pull that out there too. That, is that the key line? Nope, that's the Meyer lemon. This is an orange. This is a variegated, I love variegated. This is a pink lemon. Seriously guys, pink lemon. It will come out pink. I'll show you a picture, I have a picture. Um, but the skin, the peel will be kind of stripy, kind of like the variegation. And then inside it's an actual pink lemon. I'm so excited. This is one of my blueberries. It's a mini blueberry. It was doing really well until all of a sudden it wasn't. And I'm not sure what is getting it because look at the leaves have been like literally eaten and stripped. So if anybody knows why, I'm gonna just get it in the ground so that it can just take off and hopefully survive. This is a pansy that my wonderful nephew gave to me when my sister got married. We brought it all the way back from Georgia and I kept it alive all winter. And I thought that the yellow ones died, but look, yellow. It's thriving, isn't it? Nice, huh? You can eat these, you know, put them in salads. Beautiful, huh? This is a key lime. We are in Minnesota, which I am gardening in zone 4B. So these will have to go into the house, just inside the patio door um, for the winter. All right, so here is my asparagus patch. And there's three different kinds in here. There's the purple, there's the jersey, and there's the Martha Washington. And do not ask me which are which. I guess we'll see at some point, won't we? Chop and drop, guys. Put the nutrients back into the Soil. They're not doing the greatest because I recently transplanted them. They are coming back. But I think some of them have a little bit of transplant shot. All of these came from my gardener. Up here, once I get all the weeds out of there, will be our blueberry patch. So all the blueberries will be up here. I'm gonna run around to the front. Up here will be kind of cottagey flower garden. All the baskets will have flowers. All of these will have flowers. I just haven't gotten around to it. And we have a lot of projects that are halfway done. With me being sick, we just needed to get things in the ground. So we got it as set up as we could just to get it in the ground and growing. Now we're gonna come back and enclose it. Here I've got a bunch of seedlings that will be going in here eventually. And then we're gonna put Hayden's garden bed in as well. The entrance to the Three Sisters garden, I'm thinking of putting a rose box right here at the end, moving this in a little bit. Steve doesn't know yet, changed in the plan. But all of these are going to make a little patio. And then the rose box is going to have an arbor that's going to go up, up, and over the entrance to the three sisters. And then I'm going to put another rose box here. And that will have another cattle panel that will come up and over. So it'll be kind of like a little tunnel entrance. Mystical, magical, whimsical. I've always been into fantasy type, type stuff. You know, I had a friend that actually asked me when I was in middle school when I was gonna get over unicorns and rainbows. And I just wanted to let you know that, Kate, I have not ever, ever gotten over unicorns and rainbows and dragons and hobbitses and 
all of that stuff. So watch for a lot of those elements. <laughs> oh, Star Wars too. I was the girl playing with my Star Wars action figures and my AT-AT versus Barbies. <laughs> I was the weird one. Were you weird? Raise your hand. You can raise your hand in the comments and let your freak flag fly. Because there's a little freak in all of us. All right, so in here, once all of these holes are filled in, we're gonna plant flowers. Marigold, sunflowers, and lavender, like every other hole. It's gonna be magical, trust me. I'm one of those people who has to be symmetrical, so the holes will match, like. So that's gonna be a mammoth sunflower there in the corner. Same thing in that corner, will be a mammoth sunflower. You can see the stick? Yes, I know they're T-posts. They're sparkly sticks now. Um, sparkly, the sparkly stick is going to hold a four foot fence that will keep any deer or hopefully any other little critters out. Each mound has two different types of corn on top. So we've got four and four. All right, so what we've got here on this side, and you can see we need to do a little bit of weeding, but I'm not gonna do that now. Strawberry popcorn. So these three are strawberry popcorn. This one is blue popcorn. This, can anybody tell me before I tell you by the little dots what these are? All right, I'm gonna tell you. It's moon and stars watermelon, yay. This right here is a butterbush, which is a tiny, small, individual serving size butternut squash. This is a golden midget. This is a golden midget. Obviously, that one's not doing so well. Okay, so my favorite squash is spaghetti squash. And look, none of those come up. I have another one over there, only one. So I'm planning on replanting those. I love spaghetti squash. All right, next mound. This side here is peaches and cream corn. Peaches and cream, peaches and cream. That one under there is probably peaches and cream. Ooh, not. That one is Orchard Baby. I bet you that's Orchard Baby. So Orchard Baby is these tiny little corns. As I'm describing these, I will throw up pictures. These are Kajari melons. This squash right here is a sugar pie pumpkin. This one, acorn squash. Steve likes acorn squash, so that's those. Moving on. Crookneck squash, crookneck squash. Kiku, kiku melon, kiku melon. As you can see in the middle, I already pulled out what I was going to thin, and I like to chop and drop. It's just me. Everybody's got their own way of doing things. Orchard baby, orchard baby. Probably orchard baby. Gray zucchini. This is South American popcorn. Same thing. We absolutely love popcorn. It's our favorite snack. So I'm hoping that all of these popcorns turn out well. I've never grown popcorn before, so I'm pretty excited. This is more Kajari melons. Caho melon here. More Kiku. Chrysanthemum melons. Butter. Baby glasses, can't even see it from there. What does it say? Bendy Kadima. Bendy Kadima, whatever, I don't know how to say it. Blue popcorn. So, looks like we need to replant a couple popcorns because they did not germinate. Um, this side is glass gem. Glass gem, glass gem, glass gem. This side is a sweet 132 melon. And I will put that up on the screen with the packet. Over here we have tiger melons. Golden delight squash. More glass gem. Glass gem, glass gem, glass gem, glass gem, glass gem. There's my one and only spaghetti squash so I really need to replant those this buttercup squash crookneck squash and then this side is more South American popcorn which I will probably put maybe one or two more in there okay so you're supposed to plant your beans and peas when your corn is about six inches five six inches tall it's a little taller than that but I think we're gonna be good so in the next day or so I'm gonna come out here and put 
like four beans or peas around each corn stalk. And the theory behind the Three Sisters Garden, corn robs nitrogen, beans give nitrogen. So, and the corn will act as a trellis that the beans can crawl up. So that's the theory behind the Three Sisters. And then also the squash that you plant around the outside of the mound, it kind of overgrows into the uh, paths. And because squash is so pokey, it keeps critters from getting to your mounds because they don't like to walk through the prickly, which I don't blame them. I don't like it either. Okay, moving on. Okay, so as you know, or maybe you don't, we live in Minnesota, so we could not have a Three Sisters Garden and not plant the Minnesota Midget. Back there we have Tender Sweet Orange watermelon. That one's a gray zucchini. Gray zucchini. This one is a Peter Pan patty pan. So I'm kind of excited about those. I haven't tried patty pans before. On that side is more orchard baby. Those little baby corns. I planted them on three mounds just because they're little. This is Japan. I don't know how to say this. Japonica. This is mainly just an ornamental corn. It just comes out and it's got these really pretty like, it's not there yet. Stripey red. You can see the red at the bottom. This mound, more Minnesota midgets. This is stir fry baby corn. You know, those little teeny tiny corns that you put in with Asian stir fries? I'm not a big fan of those, but Steve likes them, so I'm gonna put them in. This is Ford Hook squash. This is. Golden Delight squash. Can anybody tell me what's eating? Is it those little stripy squash bugs that does this? What's eating it? Okay, now, the one and only, this is our last mound to go over. And then we get to go to the fancy garden. Okay, Golden Midget Watermelon. Looks like only one. This. Stir fry baby corn, more of those. This one, Ford hook squash. Can anybody guess what those two are? <laughs> now that you know. All right, so this one, sugar pie pumpkins. There's three of them. Obviously we're not gonna need three, so I'll probably nix these two or maybe dig them up and give them to somebody. My neighbor has a garden, maybe she'd want them. Uh, this one is a yellow custard squash. Two of those, the patty pans ones. And then this is more peaches and cream. So each variety of corn, I have about eight stock. And each mound is planted with two different kinds of corn so that they'll cross pollinate. Cross pollination doesn't mean that it won't produce seeds that won't grow within the following year. It just means that it might not be the exact same plant, but you'll still get corn. Corn is corn. You just might have a surprise and I'm okay with that. But then again, what if you cross like peaches and cream with glass gem, like an eating corn with a flint corn? What happens? I don't know. Anybody know? If you do, leave it in the comments below. Now, the part that we've all been waiting for. <gasps> Look, the main garden or, you know, where a majority of my babies. We've got mostly tomatoes on this side, mostly peppers and eggplants on that side. A few of the peppers kind of came around here. So let's start here. This one is a mystery pepper. The tag fell out, but then I wrote mystery pepper on it and that one split. <laughs> so that's why I know that this is my mystery pepper because that one split. This one right here is a lemon spice jalapeno and we've already got babies growing. Yesterday, I pulled a pepper off of this, which I shouldn't have, because I should have showed you. But these I grew purely because they're pretty. This is that Bueno Malta pepper, and it puts these really pretty little purple flowers. But I'm not a fan of hot peppers, so I probably won't eat them, but Steve loves hot peppers. This is aroma. This is an Amish pate. The flowers at the top I'm letting stay, but a lot of the flowers that were lower, I did pinch off. This one is a pink 
B, and I didn't have the heart to take those little guys off. Uh, this is a purple Cherokee. I'm excited about this one. These are supposed to be really good, and here's a little sucker. This is a Paul Robeson, and something, I don't know what the heck is going on with it, but I'm really disappointed because I really want Paul Robesons because they're supposed to be smoky and amazing. So I may replant that. I can bring it in. This, look at these. Aren't they pretty? Look at those. This is a Sunrise Bee and a Sunrise Bee Sucker. This one is a black trifle tomato. I'm growing a lot of these because I don't know what other varieties I'm going to like. But I wanna find some other loves. This is a Mountain Vineyard. This is from Haas Tools. That packet came with only 10 seeds. So I'm very curious to know if that 10 seeds was worth $10. So, we'll see. This is a ground cherry. However, I planted three different kinds of ground cherries and I do not know what these two are. So, if you do see that flower, what kind of ground cherry is this? Is this pineapple, Aunt Molly's, or New Hanover? Because I have all three. So if you know what that is, let me know, because the stick fell out. This one is a pink ox heart, and I'm gonna tell you a story about this one. I only had one pink ox heart that survived. I usually plant about four or five of every plant when I sow my seeds in the, in the spring. And then I usually plant two plants, two to three, because I never want to put all my eggs in one basket. Well, this is the only basket that we had. This is the only basket that survived for the pink ox hearts. Okay, so little story about this poor little tomato right here, this one. When I was going to put him in the ground, he snapped off right at the root. And I thought, oh no, it's the only one. But I took a chance because I know that, you know, you can pull off a sucker. See all those little nubs right along the sides of the stalk there? Those will root. So I took a chance. I put him in the ground. Oh, let the light adjust here. I took a chance, I put him in the ground, and he is thriving. I should cut these off. Do you put energy into those little blossoms yet? It kills me to do that because I really want food. I really want tomatoes. But if you pull these off, and usually what I do with anything that I chop off, just drop it in the middle there, and then as it decays, it gives back to the soil. This one is a mountain vineyard sucker that I pulled off of here. So I just put the tag in between them, and again, Cost tools better be worth that 10 bucks. All right, this, these two I am really, really excited about because I've heard that these two are awesome for sauces, so I'm really excited to try them. They're both alpacas. Is that how you say that? Alpacas? Alpaca. Alpaca. I don't know. I don't know. Somebody knows, phonetically type it out for me. And they're supposed to be really, really good for sauces. So I'm excited. We eat a lot of spaghetti, we eat a lot of tacos. Tomatoes are just a staple in most houses, I think. Don't you think? It's starting to sprinkle. So, hold that thought and we'll be back when it's done raining. All right, so I'm gonna finish this tour of getting dark, we're losing light. So this is a pink chef, this is a pink chef, and these are all pink chef suckers. This one is a Roma. We eat Romas probably most often. They're pretty versatile. You can use them in sauce, you can use them on sandwiches, you can use them for tacos, you know. It's pretty much all around tomato. That's a Roma. This one is a purple bee. This one is a black cherry. This is a black cherry and so is this one. And you remember how I talked about how if they're close to the ground they get these little nubs? So this one was laying on the ground because I hadn't staked them up yet. So it started growing all these little nubs because it was gonna root. I said, oh no you don't. And I staked them up and this will straighten out once you train it to go up. It just needs a few days in the sun. It'll naturally reach for the sun. That's what it did because it was laying on the ground. It was reaching for the sun. It'll straighten out, it'll get better. Now here's the story about these two tomatoes. This is a sweetheart cherry and I was most excited about this one because the description on it says, colorful bowl of gems or jewels or I can't remember exactly what it said. I planted several of these because I'm like, oh, <laughs> I gotta have some of that. So I planted several of these and I thought only one survived. So I had all my hope on this one plant. And then I realized, because a stick had fallen out of one of the tomatoes, this one was nearby and I'm pretty sure that it is also a sweetheart cherry because look at the leaf pattern. Okay, so it's got these 
frilly ones and then it's got these little ones in the middle see them and then you look at this one and it's got these and these little ones in the middle so I am pretty sure that we lucked out and got two sweetheart cherries and a sweetheart cherry sucker so and I think he's doing pretty good look at he's stiffening up unlike floppy over here I don't know that that one's gonna make it but I think it'll bounce back tomatoes are pretty good like that down on this end we need to do something about the tree up here I've got to trim some of the branches because these four plants on the end are not getting enough light these are Amish paste so I definitely want those this side is where we are doing some eggplant this is a black beauty and I'm surprised it's flowering because it's not getting very much sun it's so this one is a black beauty as well. The story behind the eggplant and the reason why I want to grow it is because I really, I have a friend who um, is Middle Eastern and she introduced me to Baba Ganoush and it was amazing. So I wanted to grow eggplant, but which eggplant to grow? I don't know. So I'm trying like every variety. Well, not every, but a bunch of them that looked interesting. This one, Rosita. I love saying it. It's fun. Try it. Pause the video and try it. Rosita. It's fun. This one, Palermo. And look at the pretty, pretty, pretty Rosa Bianca. This one is Chinese string. And that is Chinese string. I don't know guys, am I supposed to pull those off? I haven't grown eggplant before, so when you pull the blossoms off tomatoes so you get, you get, you get a lot more. But are you supposed to do that with eggplant and peppers too? I'm not a pepper fan, but I'm growing all those peppers for Steve. Cause I love him. This one, Ping Tongue. Uh oh, what's eating this one? I don't see nothing, Antigua. Look at that pretty flower. And then I think this is a regular ground cherry. The sticks got moved, don't judge. Anyway, I'm excited to try these. This one is a Tabasco. And I did not put stuff on either side because I've heard that this thing gets big. This is a lemon drop pepper. And guys, see the change in the foliage? Usually to me, yellow means too much water, but that's a lemon drop. So maybe lemon drop means yellow leaves too? I don't know. This one, I believe, oh shoot, I don't know what that is. My sticks fell out. I have got to come up with a better system. But then it's also fun to guess and wait and see. And kind of like those mystery seed packets from my gardener. They're fun. This one is a coral bell, sweet pepper. I'm excited about that. I, I'm going to try the sweet peppers. I'm not a fan of hot peppers. This cubanelle, this sugar rush peach. I'm excited about that one too. Look at those blossoms. Isn't that pretty? Pretty sugar rush peach. And again, more yellowish than I'm used to. Is this normal for this one? Or should I be adding something to the soil? Help me out. This one. Your guess is as good as mine. This one is definitely a banana pepper. Maybe. This one is a YOLO. That one is a Keystone. And this one, Peppercino. This one, I think, is a banana. I planted several banana peppers because everybody likes banana peppers and pepperoncini. These are anchos. All right, so that is it for this week's tour.